Welcome back to another one of my Cooper Goalie Gear gear reviews. This time we're going to step backwards again and we're going to go to 1990. This week we're going to talk about the Pro lineup, which is the GP Pro pads, the GM Pro S blocker, and the GM Pro C catch glove. Pretty unique gear for the time, and really unique is that it had a one-year catalog life. 1990 is the only year that this gear shows up. So when it was introduced, this was considered the Super Pro top line uh, pad and gloves. This is Cooper's introduction to the box pad style of pad. So we'll start right off by talking about the pads. I'll talk about the slight variations here in just a second, but you have a DuraSoft and Cordura face is a foam stuffed pad. Um, and it has nylon straps with plastic clamshell pinch type buckles. Leg channel is really deep, so it's kind of considered a box pad because you get a lot of coverage on inside and outside of your leg. And the leg channel is DuraSoft original like suede type material, it's very similar to what we call Nash nowadays. Probably my least favorite part of the concept of these pads was these straps. It's really difficult to strap up, especially the lower ones and keep them snug. Other than that, don't really have too much problem. On the red set, I did replace the skate strap with a leather strap with a regular buckle. That's probably the hardest one to do with the clamshell is around the bottom of your skate. You do have calf protector and um, knee protector. You do have a regular uh, leather toe buckle system. It came in the typical Cooper sizes. So you had uh, GP Pro, which is 30 inch, GP Pro L, which is 32, and XL, which is 34 inch. In the marketing concepts behind these pads, they were said to be 40% lighter than conventional pads. My guess is that that's comparing them to like a, a deer hair and K-pop or just deer hair stuff or deer hair and foam stuff pad, or potentially compared to a leather pad. They have 35% more protection than a conventional pad. Again, I'm going to say that's probably because of the design concept of it being a box pad where your leg sits down in instead of it sitting on the front of your leg. So if you add this in this surface area, I guess that's 35% more coverage. Also, they said it was 12% less rebound than other foam pads. I don't know the science behind that. They are a bit of a stiff, flat face shin. I really don't know how you calculate 12% less rebound. Another cool feature about these pads was that they included a knee and thigh protector. And these have a tab on the bottom here that sticks down with Velcro on it. And then on the inside of the leg channel of the pad, there's a patch of matching Velcro. So your knee pad would attach and um, become essentially somewhat of a, a knee cradle, I guess. Um, it allowed for less rotation of the pad again. I find that they don't stick very well in there. During gameplay, they seem to come loose. Maybe that's because these are 30 something years old or whatever, and the Velcro isn't as good anymore. And this is the GPKP. The GPX is the basic same knee pad, but without that tab. So we'll talk about variations a little bit because uh, very interestingly, again, it's only one year in the catalog and the catalog only shows one specific style of pad. And that is like the blue ones here. Um, blue ones have the thigh, the thigh rise, I guess you call it, is a flat panel. And if you notice in my other pads here, we have the uh, rolled panel on the thigh. That is not shown in the catalogs as an option at all. Uh, another difference, and it's gonna be this pad here, is I'm gonna guess that this is a custom pad. This is the last one I acquired of the three. And I'm fairly certain that this is gonna be a custom because 
these white ones only say GP Pro. They don't have an L designator. They don't have a size stamp down here on the L side of the skate. And if you all look closely, the Super Pro badging is upside down compared to the other pads. They are 32 inch pads as well. So theoretically without the L, they should have been 30 inch pad. But again, I've, a lot of times in the custom department, they just use the stock graphic without the designator when they made a pad of a different size. So uh, overall with the pad, I like it. It's probably, especially in this range of pads, uh, my least favorite of the Cooper pads. I feel like they're too wide. I know that's weird to say about old pads, but when I'm strapped in and I'm walking down the hallway to enter the ice, I really feel like I have a hard time. Like there's, I, I they seem to rub and um, I, it all gets out of my mind. None of this bothers me during gameplay. So, you know, once I'm out on the ice, that doesn't bother me. The other thing is that these straps, I don't like pad rotation at all. These straps and the deep channel make it really hard for me to get these pads to stop rotating. So a lot of times I'll go down in a scramble like I always do uh, because I have no style and technique. And when I go to get up, a lot of times the pad will rotate to the outside on me. Um, and so I have to panic and pop it back over real quick. So those are my two concerns really. Uh, it, like I said, doesn't seem to bother me too much when I play. But, so next up, we're going to talk about the blocker, which is uh, called Stick Love, actually. So this is the GM Pro S model, uh, S for Stick Love. It is a uh, full Durasoft glove. You have like nylon cuff and Durasoft palm. You do have the padded strip across the palm here. And there's actually a, a Rubitex pad behind the back hand of the palm. It does have the plastic. Uh, layer and then foam behind it. Uh, you have your finger protection on the front, you know, for slash protection and puck protection uh, in case you paddle down and the puck pops in. You have your adjustable wrist strap right there, nice and easy to get at so you can cinch it up real well. It doesn't have the one piece thumb. You have a shorter thumb here that's attached at the uh, cuff instead of coming up as one molded piece of plastic up to the wrist. The uh, palm of the of the blocker tapers down at the wrist, so you have a narrower opening in the palm here than than a lot of other gloves did at the time. And they also marketed this as a one piece blocking plastifoam inside of here, which they can, said was their thickest blocker uh, to date at that point. I've never actually measured it. it. It doesn't look a whole lot thicker, but I think maybe compared to, you know, a step down from this is still the GM12 at the time. So it's probably a quarter inch, maybe thicker than a GM12. So in the catalog, again, you only had three color options. You had white with blue, white with red, and white. This is actually uh, an anomaly <laughs> item. So I'm gonna assume this was also a custom because this is white with black trim and the catalog doesn't show this. It shows white with white trim. Um, another thing about it is the catalog only shows the 10 hole face and this is a solid face. So maybe this was a custom or it was a, a European model or something like that. White with red is a little rough looking because when I got this, it was actually new old stock. I got this and the trapper at the same time. They had been in the original factory bags for whatever that is now, 30 years, and they were in a warehouse full of stuff and not climate controlled and so on. Um, and when I got them, the graphics were like sticky and they would, they would smear, they were tacky. So there's some little bits of red here. Um, but if you just touched like that, you could bring it off and you'd have red on your fingertips. I did end up eventually, I tried a couple different things in some different spots and I ended up finding a waterproofing spray that worked really great, uh, did not damage the surface, did not yellow the surface, and it stopped the stickiness from happening. 
<clears throat> I've never reapplied that stuff, and that's been close to two years now on this. So now let's talk about the catch glove, which would be the GM Pro C. And again, the C is catch glove. You have a really large surface, catching surface in here. Like this is a pretty good sized palm. It's a Dursoft and Cordura build. It has a one piece uh, cuff to cheater. So instead of the old ones where they had the second section of uh, leather that came across here and then there and was strung to the cuff and then strung to these uh, laces here, it's all one molded piece. So you've got a good inch and a half at least padding behind that cuff. It does have the normal fast lock pinky loop. You have individual finger stalls and you do have a thumb loop, which is adjustable underneath here. There's a Velcro, you can cinch that up. You also have a back, uh, back wrist uh, leather buckle with, or leather strap with metal buckle. Standard T, pro lacing. Uh, again, with the Cooper gloves, a lot of times, I, I'm not sure because I've noticed it in other gloves, but maybe it was unique to them to some degree, but they have a, a lace that runs through here in line with the break. So they considered that a pre-sewn closure break to help uh, the glove break in properly and open and close the right way. So one other feature that they talk about on this glove, and they actually stamp it on the inside here, is that it has a comfort flex thumb. And in the catalog, they talk about that being uh, a feature that allows you to stick handle better with your catch glove. I don't understand it. There's no flex to it at all that I can come up with. I don't know what kind of flex they would be talking about. Um, and I suck at stick handling, so it doesn't do me any good at all. This glove, again, came with the blocker, had the graphics that were sticky and, and uh, tacky and so on. I ended up losing the cuff graphic on this. I'll eventually replace it with heat transfer vinyl. I only have the red and white and the blue and white. Again, the glove in the catalog came in a white also. Uh, I've not found a white. So, for anybody watching this video, if you've got, in good condition, a Cooper GM Pro white or white with black trim, shoot me a message, would you? If Let me know if it's for sale. I'd be interested in adding that to my collection. Like I've said in other videos and like you've seen in my game videos, I like to wear a full set. So I try to get full sets of gear so I can wear full sets of gear. That was it. They didn't have a pant for this series. They didn't have a chest protector for this series. And even though this was one year, I'm gonna throw up some photos here and you'll see there were some big name goalies wearing this, uh, this gear, very specifically the pads. Um, you know, one of my favorites is Mr. Wamsley there who was the poster boy for the uh, pro lineup. And you know, with that marketing image of being a conventional pad that was lightweight. Hopefully you liked the video. I'm just trying to fill in the uh, gap here while we're all kind of stuck at home with our ice rinks closed. We're all missing hockey. Hopefully everybody's staying safe. If you did like this video, if you wouldn't mind, click that subscribe button. Feel free to share the video link to your friends or anybody that might get a kick out of seeing up close some of this gear from the 90s. And so anyway, thanks.